And what was and welcome to my channel, I'm the Obscure and Joe PD, and for today what I do bring you need it is High and Fury. So High and Fury, what the hell is this game? So this is uh, kind of so-so uh, in the developer, it is developed by a team called Voipoint, which have people from Duke Nukem 3D, Prey and Max Payne. So they decided to team up and develop a game using the build engine and you might be thinking what the hell is the build engine the build engine it is the engine used by Duke Nukem 3D and a lot of other games like Shadow Warrior and Blood this is a very old engine this is an engine where uh, the enemies the character enemies were kind of 2D with sprites and the objective of this game it is really that one it is to use an engine that is from the 1990s alright a very very old engine and make a game that looks like a very old engine so <laughs> what is so difficult about it you know using this engine all the games will look old but the thing is there is a lot of new changes in gameplay that makes it to be an interesting game yes it's still have the old stuff from the cards from Duke Nukem 3D. I'm pretty sure this uh, this game it is uh, kind of created to bring people back to the old times from the 1990s. And I'm pretty sure that most of my the people watching this video are born in 2000s. Probably they never played Duke Nukem 3D. But I, w I am from that time. I am from the 1989. So I'm very old guy by now. And I played Duke Nukem 3D and it was a very nice game. Unfortunately, I was too young too at the time. But if you had an FPS game at the time, uh, most of the game was using this engine, this build engine. So this might look very old and you might be thinking stuff like, for example, Alright, so this is too old, the engine it is too old, why the hell are you benchmarking this? Because I'm pretty sure your PC will run this fine. So this is the requirements for the game. As you can see, they only require any 64-bit CPU, 1 gig of RAM, <coughs> and yes, even the Intel integrated graphic cards are supported. So for the recommended, they recommended the Ryzen, and you might be thinking, why? 2 gigs of RAM and a decent graphic card. Unfortunately, the results speak from themselves. Despite the game runs absolutely fine with averages above 100 frames per second and maxing out at 240 frames per second, there are areas where the game performs under 60 frames per second. And you might be asking why. This is actually exactly because the engine it is too old. The way that they developed this game and uh, the big ambiences, the big rooms, this is a thing that wasn't really supported at the time from all games that were developed at the time. And this game only takes advantage of one single core, it is OpenGL, so there is a lot of stuff that they are pushing the boundaries of this engine. Despite it looks ugly, it is true, it looks old, that's the objective. Uh, it doesn't mean that it needs to run or that will be running fast. And the thing is, yes, despite it is too old, Sometimes there are drops in frame rate from below 60 frames per second. Exactly because at the time, this engine, and I mean, this engine, it isn't even. I, I don't know how to even talk about it. I mean, this might not make any sense to you, but let me talk to you because this engine, it is too old. And the fact that it's running a game with graphics like this, with big maps and stuff like this, and uh, being playing it at a very high resolution. It isn't even supported at the time, so they needed to make a lot of workarounds for this game to work, to use in this engine and to work properly today with this engine. And that's why you see these drops in frame rates. Because <laughs> the objective for them, it was really to bring this old engine, really to bring the old gameplays for this game to look exactly like this. So if you miss the times from Duke Nukem 3D, the times from the old Shadow Warrior, you can buy this game on Steam for 20 bucks, alright, it might sound too much, but you have other stores where you can buy the game. And yes, and despite it drops from 60 frames per second, it remains smooth most of the time, it plays really well. Unfortunately, I wasn't really able to use MSI Afterburner in here. I'm able, alright, I'm able to see it, but uh, recording OpenGL wasn't really working for me, so I had to use a software called... Uh, action, Miru is action, which uh, kind of conflicts with MS Afterburner. So the frame rate it is on the upper right corner, it is the red numbers, and well, that's exactly that. So with this, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of gameplay of this game. Hope you keep enjoying the rest of it, and I do hope to see you soon. Goodbye, guys. Thank you a lot for watching.
Worthless consumer models.
nothing that laying down another beating can't solve. What are you gonna do? Send me to my room? Splash! 